everybody, how's it going? This is Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thanks so much for being with me today. Let's end the focus. I have a Facebook group called Acrylic Pouring and Fluid Painting and I showed this painting on there, the group members, wanting to know how I did it, um, if they could see a video. Well, here's the funny thing about this. I had made a bunch of paint because I wanted to make a couple geode paintings and I ended up having a little bit of paint left over and so I thought, well, I don't wanna waste this all and I, I couldn't save it, so what did I do? I made a tree ring pour and I did videotape it because I try to video everything I do, but of course I did it in a time-lapse video and the video was literally only 30 seconds long. So I wanted to make this intro to the video to explain to you how I mix my paint, the technique and all that, and I will include the time lapse at the end of this portion and I've kind of slowed it down a little bit so you can see my technique a little bit more. Also, I did want to address a couple other things before I get started. Uh, as you can see here, I've got this super cute little t-shirt on. I do make these. I drop ship them from a uh, manufacturer. I designed this, um, as you know, at the end of most of my videos, I say keep on pouring or keep on painting. It's kind of become a tagline. And so I wanted to make some shirts and apparel. These are racerback tanks that say pouring addict. You can get them with or without the hashtag. Um, and all of these apparel items are from Next Level Apparel, which is my personal favorite. I love this Next Level Apparel brand. It's super soft. Everything is very high quality. Um, so here's another one, Keep On Painting. And this is also a racerback. I do also have a bag, which I should have brought in here, but I didn't. It is a linen tote and it has a zipper. It's awesome. It's so cute. And it has this uh, Keep On Pouring on it in black lettering. If you want to go check those out at my Spreezy store, that is www.spreezy.com slash dryerdays and I'll put a link in the description as well. A couple other shirts I have on there too, if it flows, it goes. That's kind of the, the slogan of my Facebook group. And uh, men's shirts available as well. Actually, I did have a gentleman on there who got a shirt. He says it feels like a little community and when he's out wearing it, if it's recognizable to other people, even better. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys. They're really cute. It is so comfortable, lightweight, cotton, soft. You'll love it. Back to this painting. So. Now this is dry, and as you can see, um, it, I don't have any um, top coat on it yet. So I even still have the back still taped up. I don't take that tape off until I have sealed it and everything. So if you are in the Facebook group, you will have noticed that it's very shiny because I took a picture of it when it was still wet. And I did use my pouring medium on this, so this paint has stayed exactly put where it was. Um, when I finish the painting. So I'm just thrilled. It has such nice dimension and depth and it has this nice matte finish. So I do have that UV um, resistant gloss top coat that I like to use on my paintings, but I also have a matte finish that's good for oil and acrylic paints. And I'm kind of debating on using that because I sort of like this matte finish that it already has going on, but I would like to protect it as well. So I may go ahead and use the matte Finish. What I did with um, the paints is I'm going to try to see if I can attach a picture here in the video. I'm not that tech savvy, but I'm going to try. The color palette that I found on Pinterest, a dark purple, sort of a medium purple, a magenta, a light pink, and a yellow. And I thought that would look really awesome as a pour. I took Liquitex Basics paints and Winsor Newton paints and I combined the colors mix some with black, some with white to lighten them until I got the exact shade that I wanted because I've had some people ask me, what colors did you use? Well, it's sort of a smorgasbord of different color paints and brands until I got the hue that I liked. I measure my cup with the paint in it and then I do equal parts to my pouring medium. Love this pouring medium. I use it all the time. I'm not a huge fan of just straight Floetrol or straight Liquitex pouring medium and that can also get very pricey. So I developed this recipe. I love it. I know other people in the group have used it. They like it. So if you have used my pouring medium, please comment and let me know what you think of it. If I use one ounce of paint, then I use one ounce of pouring medium. Mix that thoroughly. Get it really combined all together. And then I add water to consistency. So I do not measure how much water I put in. I just mix enough in to where the paint is a little thicker than the consistency of coffee creamer. So if you use coffee creamer at all, you know, 
it's a little bit thicker than water and my paint just tends to be a little bit thicker than that. And you know, it's personal preference. I'm just telling you what I use, that's what I do. People want to know how I made this painting and I'm just telling you. I know everybody has an opinion on there and that's fine. You need to use what works for you. This is what works for me. This is how I got this painting. By the time I got to this painting, I had already used pretty much all the dark purple. You can still see a little bit in here. Um, I did add white, Liquitex Titanium White, and a little bit of ivory black at the very end, which you will see in the next clip as I pour the paints into my measuring cup. This right here is the painting that I did with the original palette. So this is a very, this is almost black, a very dark purple. This is sort of that medium purple, um, the yellow okra. There is white in here, there's a magenta, and then of course I added uh, the glitter. And there also was, I did make a gold metallic, which you can kind of see in here a little bit. And there was a little bit of that left for me to incorporate into here. So even in some spots, you can sort of see that gold metallic in there. But just the veining on this, I mean, it's so crisp. And I just, I find that I get that and it stays that way when I use my pouring medium. I tend to get that runny moving all over the place. I wake up to a different painting when I'm using other pouring mediums. So I don't mean to harp on that. It's just, that is what I found and I have been doing these for almost two years now. Very frustrating in the beginning when I couldn't figure out why my paintings were moving all over the place, why my cells were getting destroyed and all that. Okay, so we have equal parts paint and pouring medium. We have now watered it down to consistency and I will mention I use spring water. I've used tap water before, I just prefer to use bottled spring water. I started with the white, I put the white in first and then I went um, from lightest to darkest. So I did my yellow and I kind of, you'll see in the video, um, it just goes very fast, which is why I'm explaining it now. And I finished with a little bit of that ivory black. I have it in a condiment squeeze bottle and I poured it in uh, just to give me a little bit more paint, give me a little bit more depth because I was pretty much out of that really dark purple. And you'll see, I just poured it out onto the painting, manipulated my canvas a little bit. Of course, it's time-lapse again, so it looks like I did it really fast. Um, the paint was pretty fluid and I was kind of doing it quickly to manipulate it without losing too much paint, but it definitely was not as fast as it's gonna be depicted in the video. I've had a lot of people ask me, because I use glue in my pouring medium, if the glue is gonna yellow the painting over time or if it's gonna lift up. You know, I have not found that, and I have paintings that are a year and a half old that I did with just glue and water, um, and I have had no yellowing, and that was even prior to me varnishing my paintings. Now I do a spray gloss or I will do some sort of top coat or a matte finish, which is really just gonna protect your paintings even more, especially if you're doing outdoor vendor shows or art shows and you're outside and your paintings are hanging up and the sun is blasting on them. It's just a good idea to have some sort of a top coat or a varnish on there to protect those paintings. So I hope this helped guys. Thank you so much for the response. I mean, the group is blowing up and I know half the people in there like don't even know that I have a YouTube channel, whatever. Well, I hope this gives you a little insight into me. Check out the shirts and the tank tops. I hope you guys like them. If you want a little bit of a, actually it's kind of a big discount on the shirts and stuff. Become a patron if you can. If not, that's okay too. I just appreciate you guys watching so much. I appreciate all of your um, activity in the Facebook group. It's just been awesome. You guys are so positive and uplifting to one another. I love it. And again, that Facebook group is acrylic pouring and fluid painting. If you haven't even done one of these paintings yet before and you're just clicking on this because you're interested, um, and how to do it and you'd like to do it, but you've never done a painting, come over to the Facebook group. I have so many people joining the group that have never even done one of these paintings before and they're just trying to get their bearings. I have people in there that have been doing fluid painting for 10 years. It's such a nice uh, spectrum of experience and we're all just sharing it with each other and it's awesome. And until next time guys, keep on pouring. bad guys here it is carry all your art supplies go into the pool it's got a little zipper check it out in my spray store